everyone! In today's video, I'm going to show you how I do astrophotography while I'm traveling. So this is such a highly requested topic from you guys. You're always messaging me on Instagram and Twitter to make a topic, to make a video about this topic. So here we are today in beautiful Yosemite National Park. We are at the famous Tunnel View. So today we're going to be using the Sony a7 III as the main body for all these astro photos. We're going to do a few landscape photos and we're also going to do some portraits with the landscape in it as well. And I'm going to use two different lenses. I'm going to use the Canon 35mm 1.4 Mark II, adapted with the Metabones 4. And I'm also going to use the Sony 28mm F2, which is a little bit more of a budget lens, just to keep this a little bit more fair and realistic for everyone. So hopefully you guys will enjoy all of that. So one of the main things that you're gonna need with astrophotography is a tripod. Ideally, you'd want something very sturdy, but today, all we have and all I brought with me on this trip is the Joby Gorilla Pod, so we're gonna hope for the best with these photos. <laughs> okay. By the way, I just wanted to mention that this is more of a hobby astrophotography tutorial. This is just what I do when I'm traveling and I want some star photos. I'm sure there are more professional tutorials if that's what you're after, but this is kind of, if you just like to take a few star photos for fun, this is what I would do. So once I have my camera pointed in the general direction, I'm going to take a test shot with my ISO probably at a uh, thousand. I'm gonna switch also my lens to manual focus and push it all the way to infinity and just take a test shot and see what we get in the frame. It's just black. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna push my shutter speed to 10 seconds instead and take another test shot. I have my first test shot of what it could possibly look like and this would just basically give me an indication of where I need to point my camera to get the proper shot. So it's a little bit too low, so I'm gonna move it up this time and I'll take another test shot. So I'm happy now with the framing of my shot. I like that the mountains are down the bottom and you can see quite a lot of sky in two thirds of the photo. I think I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to play around with my settings until I get the shot that I'm like really after. Our current settings are 10 seconds for the shutter speed, f3.5 and ISO 1000. So the first thing I'm going to try is to bump up my ISO a little bit to about, I think 1600 and then we'll push our shutter speed to 15 seconds. And again, we'll just take another test shot to see what that looks like. There's a lot of waiting when it comes to astrophotography. <laughs> so these settings are looking really good. I'm really happy with them. So now I'm gonna zoom into my photo to 100% to see where my focus is. It looks pretty out, so the next thing I'm going to focus on is getting my shot to be sharp. So as you, if you've tried astrophotography before and you don't have, um, well, I mean, if it's pitch black outside, which it is right now, autofocus doesn't really work, so you have to do it manually. So what I normally like to do is pull my focus ring all the way to infinity and then pull it back just a tiny bit, like a millimeter or two. So I'm gonna pull it back a little bit and take a test shot. Now we've got a sharp photo, we've got our settings all set up, it's pointing in the right direction. The last thing that I like to do with these long exposure photos is to set a two second timer on the shutter. So sometimes when you press the shutter button, it can jolt the camera just that little bit. So to avoid that, if you put a two second shutter, you press the shutter and the shutter doesn't open until two seconds after you've pressed it. So you'll have no motion blur from pressing the shutter. How many times did I say press the shutter in that sentence? We'll take photo. And at 15 seconds, we have no motion blur in the stars, which I really like. I like the stars to be super sharp in the photo. And you can also see all the climbers on the half dome as well. Because it's such a timely process, once I have everything set up, I like to take quite a few photos in the one location. When you take star photos, sometimes you'll get satellites or planes running through your shots, or you might even catch a shooting star as well. So I do like to take quite a few photos to make sure I have a few options to choose from. And also in case you haven't noticed, this is kind of a busy street. So we do have cars driving past constantly. And sometimes the headlights can really mess up a long exposure by making something in the foreground really bright. 
So again, I just like to take a few shots to try and avoid that as much as possible. I'll try again now when there's no pause. Stop driving. Oh, my legs. <laughs> my legs hurt. Well, that one was a good one. If I see a good one, I like to zoom in and just double check that it's nice and sharp, which it is. Have minimal movement on the stars. You can see the climbers, it's not too grainy. You can see a little bit of light in the middle of Yosemite Valley, probably from the camp spot. And there's also some cars driving down the bottom as well, which is cool. Oh, and we got like a plane or, oh, I think that's a satellite. Planes don't go upwards. I think that's a really nice shot. Once I get a shot that I'm really happy with, that I know I'll be editing that one, I've zoomed in, I had a nice good look at it, make sure I'm happy. I like to then point my camera in different directions and get a few different angles of the area that I'm in. So all the settings are set up, I'll pretty much leave them the same. Uh, so yeah, let's do that now. So I wanna get the top of the mountain in this shot, so I'm gonna point my camera way up. Again, take a test shot and see what it looks like. I need to point it even higher for this spot here because I want just the top row of the trees in the bottom of the shot and then the whole sky to be stars. So I think I have that in the shot now. I know this is also a big no-no, but I'm also going to take a few shots at 1.4 as well. We'll do that once I get this shot at 3.5. Now I'm gonna lower my aperture to 1.4. Uh, that means I'll bring my shutter up to, I'll try 10 seconds and see what that looks like. That looks cool. So cold. This is what I do for you guys. <laughs> So I'm really happy with those landscape shots. I don't want too many because I'm not a landscape photographer so I don't really have anywhere to put these photos. Um, but now I really want to do some portraits with the stars as well. So let's set up for that. Now we're taking a portrait of our friend Kung who's modeling for us over there. And I've got the same settings that we had before. We're at 10 seconds, f1.4 and ISO 1600. So we're going to take a test shot and as soon as these cars go away. All right, Kung, stay really still. One, two, three. So the shutter speed was a little bit too long for that one, so I'm gonna bring it up to uh, six seconds and see what that looks like. All right, ready, Kung? One, two, three. The trick is to get your model to stay as still as possible. Okay, let's see. That looks really cool. And I might make the shutter speed a bit faster again. So we'll go to 3.2 seconds and bump the ISO up to 2,500. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Right, from there to the red. I think that's actually from the tunnel of the red. Oh, yeah. Now we're on the Sony 28mm f2 and the first thing we're going to do is take some portraits with it. This time I want the portraits to be a little bit more close up and I want the stars and the landscape in the background to be quite blurry. So we're going to set that shot, shot up now. I'm going to stand to stand in the shot so I can frame it up and make sure the focus is correct and then we're going to fire off a few images. This is the lens I usually use to vlog on, but I also take photos on it every once in a while as well. I'm going to use the same settings that we had for the Canon as our test shot. So I'm gonna put my ISO to about 2000, my shutter speed at 10 seconds, and my aperture will be at two. I'm also gonna try and move the focus to infinity, and we'll take a test shot. Oh, that looks so pretty. And I'm really hoping we can get a shot while there's no cars driving past because they constantly light up those trees in the foreground, which doesn't look that nice. 
It's really funny, there's one guy all the way at the back of the parking lot with his brake lights on that was affecting the photo of the landscape and you can't see it with your eyes, but as soon as you take a long exposure, it's like the brightest thing ever. So he's leaving now, which is great. Okay, let's see if that fixes the problem. I also bumped my ISO up to 3200 as well, just so we can get like a bit of a brighter shot. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in and double check the sharpness. It's not super sharp. Well, that is pretty much my entire tutorial on how I photograph astrophotography when I'm traveling. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of the photos and if you're gonna try and go out and take some of these photos as well. Um, I make new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.